Hey there, and welcome back to the Brandon Sneed Show, a podcast telling stories about people making their way through life in all levels of sports, art, and entertainment, from world famous all time greats to local legends and everyone in between. We cover where people are now, how they got there, moments along the way they weren't sure they'd make it, and the things that have pulled them through. I'm your host, Brandon Sneed, and you can find links to and information and updates about all of this at my website, brandonsneed.com, and show notes, bonus material, and more by subscribing to my newsletter there. Thank you for being here. Today we have episode seven with guest Stephen Ogg, the actor appearing opposite Will Smith in the movie Emancipation, which is now in theaters and streaming on Apple Plus. You might also recognize Ogg from The Walking Dead, where he played Negan's right-hand man, Simon, the Snowpiercer series, or the video game Grand Theft Auto V, in which he voiced and performed as the psychotic character Trevor. We talked about everything from making it in Hollywood to life as an artist to Og's early days as one of Canada's top volleyball players, his interest in music and art beyond movies and video games, and the juxtaposition between the villainous and often psychotic characters that Og is perhaps best known for, and the more emotionally deep, caring, and kind roles that he is more drawn to so thanks again for listening and without further ado here is steven this is one of my favorite conversations yet thanks again well hey i'm here with steven Ogg, um the actor you probably know him uh maybe maybe best known i don't know You've done a lot of cool stuff, but you are you were Trevor. And I always like to see what people. I, I know. What are you gonna say? What's what's gonna? Where are we gonna go with this? I mean, so you were Trevor, Grand Theft Auto. Um, I know that, uh, and then The Walking Dead. You played Simon for what was it two to three seasons? You know, you're kind of Negan's right hand man. Yeah, it was yeah. three, right? Yeah. Um, played Rebus and Westworld, Flex on in The Tick actually, which The Tick is like low key. I don't know. I've always been a big tick nerd. Um, I was so know. bummed that, that that they didn't yeah. pick that up yeah. because, especially as a compliment to the boys, mm-hmm. maybe shut up. See, this is what I'm talking about: the leaf <laughs> blowers. Yeah. Um, but they they should have. They, the The head of Amazon came in. She got rid of. Didn't want to do the tick anymore. But then really? they started the boys, and I thought, what a great companion piece to the oh, boys because that's yeah. right. It's a the tick was family friendly. Yeah, just fun half hour silly superhero stuff. Yeah. So I was really bummed about that. And I was looking forward to doing more of that because it was such a, you know, I was like Plastic Man. Yeah. Big arms. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'll try, I'll try yeah. to set up since I guess this is an introduction. It's all good, man. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, and then, I should yeah. have warned you ahead of time. <laughs> good luck with this. I should have said. No, nah, man. This sometimes is Sometimes go off on tangents. No, nah, this is great, man. It's kind of the vibe I'm, I'm doing with this thing is, you know, just people talking uh, who are doing cool shit basically um but yeah i mean and then snowpiercer that series playing pike um and done a lot of other cool stuff too which we'll get into because you know you're known for playing these kind of like psychotic sort of characters it's probably like what you're maybe quote unquote most known for but like um you know we talked a while ago about i mean you because you grew up kind of a theater kid almost for a minute and then got really into sports and then found your way back into acting. And we're, we're going to kind of trace all that a bit. But yeah, I mean, you, who you are is like a human versus the characters you're known for. Um, very different, which, you know, well, prob- probably a good thing. Say. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, and nowadays during this current culture that we're, we're in where, you know, there's a lot of argument for you can't actually be an actor. Like, if you are playing this type of character, then you yeah. must be this type. I'll keep it general. Yeah. And people can fill in the blanks as to what they, they assume I'm talking about. Yeah. But yeah, in that case, it would be like for some of the characters I've played. So does that mean I have to have X number of body counts? Do I need to have killed someone to play 
a killer or like it's just yeah. that's where I find it all so fucking ridiculous because you can't mm-hmm. have it both ways and it's yeah. that's the whole point of acting like it was I forget if it was an SNL sketch or something where it's forget the character that I always say it's acting dear boy it's acting <laughs> I forget yeah. what the character was but like that's sort of what I always say especially when people are like sometimes when they first meet me and I'm just you know like to hug and yeah they're like oh i didn't expect you to be so nice and i'm like well based on <laughs> what character you think yeah of, you know be it trevor or whatever and i'm like well because it's not documentaries right like i feel like it's got to be because on one hand like you, you can kind of understand it right especially if they're people from real marginalized historically oppressed communities they want to see themselves on there, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's identity or nationality or whatever it is. But at the same time, especially as an actor, like you, you know, you, you come to these roles, you know, people that play them with a lot of empathy and compassion for the most part from what it seems like. And it's like, it's not like you're, I don't know. It's, it's a really like, that's not the direction I was planning to take this, but I'm good with it. It's, it's an interesting thought experiment because you want to honor people's experience, but you also want to honor the craft of acting and have respect for both. And, and it is a craft. I love yeah. the craft of acting and I love words and I love playing and pretending yeah. and I'm not, you know, a method actor. I don't need to go through stuff. I, I, I love like I'm currently reading Nick Cave's new book, which is essentially just an interview that he did um, yeah. with with a, a reporter, and he talks a lot about the creative process and what an artist goes through to create. And one big thing for him, because early on he was always told he was, you know, taking from other people, and he's like, "Well, I'm a collaborator. I right. love to collaborate." Like Warren yeah. Ellis is his big collaborator, and that's how I see myself as an actor is I love to play with yeah. other people. And I love, you know, the other day I was just reading this screenplay, I had a couple of friends over. I love that. I love the reading plays. I love reading out loud. I love the, the process. I love, I love the acting. The acting yeah. is, is it's pretend. And so therefore the whole reason I did it, started you know well actually i started in elementary school no idea how and i don't think my mom remembers either i did i was dressed up as betty boop in elementary Mm. school like Mm. in school um assemblies i think it was yeah and my family is not performing family they no one acted so why i dressed up in drag in elementary school I don't know where that came from, yeah. but it was essentially the love of performing and wanting right. to portray a different character. And then that's, that's kind of the thought, like I kind of had when you were mentioning that, because I mean, I've seen every, we've all seen kind of, uh, especially on Twitter, but in general, it's kind of the, the people that get really upset about certain people playing certain characters and it not fitting what they think it should be. And I mean, sure. I'm sure, sure there's been times throughout history where it's been done in bad faith or perhaps even mean spirited. But generally, I would imagine that, like, if you're in, trying to embody one of these characters, I mean, there's got to be a lot of love for it. You know, there's got to be a lot of appreciation for it. Right. And I also think, like, it's because there is a fine line. And, like, again, I, you know, there should always be discussions and it can always yeah. be agreed and disagree. But, like, you know, for me, especially like the biopics, right? Like we had yeah. the, recently the Marilyn and um, I'm yeah. thinking of like Rocket Man with Taron Edgerton or the, the Freddie Mercury with Malik. Mm-hmm. I prefer, and now this is different because I'm not talking about ethnicities or I'm not talking because that's, you know, ethnicities I don't think you, you mess with, yeah. you know. Um, sexuality, I believe it shouldn't matter mm-hmm. either way what you are like mm-hmm. for me it's like it's just like i say there's two people in the world good people and bad people like <laughs> assholes and yeah. not assholes kind exactly. and not kind yeah everything else the pronouns the sexual the this this i just I, I, you're either nice or not like you're a good person or you're not and with acting i sort of feel yeah. like you're kind of a good actor or you're not and yeah. obviously aside from ethnicities and the obvious choices and obvious things i like when 
an actor, you know, portrays someone, that's, you know, it's like adapting a book. The best, for me, film adaptations of books, just like Rocket Man adapting Elton John's life, is yeah. when it's a bit fantastical. It's right. not spot yeah. on. So when you're adapting a movie, it doesn't, I mean, a book, let's say, it could be a theme that you want to capture in the film. It doesn't have to be yeah. literal all the time and literal in the words and literal mm -hmm. in the acting. I like when it's, you know, don't have to look spot on. It's like, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of another example um, like that where the person, I mean, actually the um, great example, I think don't look back. It's not don't look back in anger because that's Oasis song. It's the Bob Dylan where they mm. had Kate Blanchett. They had all these different people playing Bob Dylan. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That poetic license yeah. is, is, is great. Um, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's, like. that's art. Like, that's art, right? It's not about documenting necessarily the factual experience or even like creating a reenactment. It's you, it's trying to capture the spirit of a thing. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Which is so fucking hard to do period. But, and that's why yeah. there should be the freedom to do such without these critical eyes placing focus on something that I don't think it should be the yeah. focus on. Like, what are you, you know, what are you trying to capture? It could just be maybe the spirit or yeah. the energy of, of the, the person you, they're portraying or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be. And sometimes it can be, but, yeah. I don't, it doesn't always have to be so literal and, and yeah. taken with such seriousness. I mean, fuck. Yeah. Lighten yeah. up and also choose your battles. Yeah. Like how some people can, you know, spend so much time berating an actor or yeah. choice or something they said. It's like, hey, everyone can have an opinion. Right. Like some people spend an obscene amount of time just like, either yeah. trying to cancel someone or destroy someone yeah. or take some down. It's like, man, get a life. It's, it's, I mean, there's certainly been some stuff that's happened that's merited and necessary and all that. And it seems like there's also been a lot that's just done. It's almost become a game for people, you know, like, uh, you know, let's kind of look and just looking for something like they get almost zealous and religious about it, which is where it gets creepy and a little scary. And people, the fact that people love to take someone down now, some, certain people should be taken yeah. down. There's people yeah. that definitely deserve to have uh, themselves taken down thoroughly yeah. and hard. Yeah. But yeah. you know, for some of this other stuff, it's like, come on, there's gotta, there's gotta be better things to do with your time. It's like, this yeah. Nick Cave I've been reading every morning. So he's, it's a lot of the dialogue and things he says have been on my mind. And, you know, yeah. one of them is about that criticism too. And he talks about how criticism is generally from people that don't create art themselves. Yeah. <clears throat> and it just kind of comes down to let's all try to go about this in a little bit more good faith, maybe, you know, like if. Or just be kind and also agree to do yeah. like, I love a good argy bargy, but you can't have them anymore. I mean, like talking about Twitter, I mean, I haven't been on Twitter in uh, years and years and years, but yeah. when I first got on, I enjoyed it because you could have arguments or like disagreements yeah. with people. Like, yeah. I, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. Okay, well, why don't you like that? Well, because I think yeah. this. Well, why do you like it? Because I think this. Cool, well, like that's, nowadays yeah. you can't do that. It's if, you, yeah. if you're against what I say, then you're, you know, there's no dialogue. It's like, well, then I can't talk to you because yeah. you're on the opposite yeah. side. It's like, no, we can yeah. disagree, man. And that's how you get yeah. better and stronger and know more of your own beliefs and choices is by listening yeah. to other people's differences. That's what I tell people all the time. I love being wrong. I love I love talking to people and they, they tell me something. Oh, shit, you're right. You know, like, fuck. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Like that's, you, how, that's how yeah. it should be. But it's, yeah. it's very tough nowadays to, yeah. you know, everyone just stays with their own kind. And yeah. they don't cross the line because you're going to get torn apart. No. Yeah. Uh, that's stupid. Um, no one grows that way. Yeah, I mean, that's really the whole point. It's like, do you want to grow or do you just want to be right? You know, it's... Uh, and hear different opinions, hear different thoughts. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I think that's a great thing. 
Um, I feel like we could ramble about that for a while. I know, right? Side I want, I want to, you know, it's where the leaf blowers are taking us, man. Um, <laughs> of course, there's silence now, but hopefully we'll get some right. in the background at some point. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, let's... Uh, um, by the way, I wanted to, to pass along a friend of mine who heard you were, you know, I was going to be interviewing you. I was super excited. And he said something that I hadn't thought of. And I'm curious your, your, your thoughts on it. I was like, he's kind of like this, like, badass psycho Jim Carrey vibes. You know, <laughs> like you got kind of that, that just, there's that extra energy you bring to what you're doing. Um, it's very much a compliment for the record. Um, yeah. That's funny. I mean, yeah. it's. Is uh, you know, the rubber face thing. I used to get it yeah. at one point. It was in, I don't know, I was living in New York. I remember yeah, it was in, used to, I think, just maybe how I looked at that time. And I think it was the Ace Ventura. And yeah. there was a time, I think it was like Origins. I don't know if those stores still exist. Origins is the. I don't know either. You got moisturizer yeah. and soap and stuff like that. It's like the body shop or something. But I remember I was in there once and. The, the the girl in the store was she said something and I made some sort of like whatever it wasn't all righty then but it was like whatever the zeitgeist that yeah. thing that he was saying a lot and I just sort of made like little comment because she was asking like are you are you like she was are you and I said something Jim Carrey and she was like That's mm -hmm. then she started to fill a bag with stuff for me so I just went along oh, with it uh, I was like I assume no you way. probably think I'm Jim Carrey maybe but it was great. I got a whole uh, free bag of Origin products, and, and that's wild. <laughs> uh, no, you do like you just you have this intensity that like kind of elevates. I mean, just the uh, you know the fuckery of your more fucked up characters, and um, we will circle back to like these more gentle and fatherly kind of characters you've been playing somewhat recently. Yeah, this too, year has but, been like um, a year of, of that of just all you yeah. Because again, it's acting like yeah. I. Yeah, I love to play different characters, and that's again, it's acting. Like you, you get known for certain things, and and yeah. that's fine. But you always want to play different roles. Yeah, that's kind of the whole. That's the that's what we're about to get into is like just your life as an artist. It's always, I mean, it's always so interesting to me how all of you know artists end up where they are doing what they do because it seems like other than a very small percentage, I mean, you kind of become known for and or make a living for playing roles. I mean, sure, you like them and you're good at them, of course, and all that, but they're not necessarily your, I don't want to say favorite because that sounds like it could be derogatory about the others, but it's, you know, there's something else you love too that you don't maybe get to do as much. And like, that's, I don't know, I just find it fascinating how you end up there and how you navigate that. Well, and I think that's why I find it interesting. Like I say, I mean, this is, this is, you know, I always preface it with, you know, I'm very grateful. Oh, of course. Do we hear the leaf blower? We got one. We got one. Yeah. We got. Where Where are you? <laughs> yeah, and a little. Some dirt fell, so we gotta we gotta get get that <laughs> blow that somewhere. If it's annoying, let me know. close one of these windows. I actually, it's actually not very loud on my end. So okay, good. I think we're good. Yeah. Right. Um, if it does, let me know, and I'll. All right. I'll close the windows. Cool. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I'm very, very grateful for, for opportunities I've had. But I think that's part of me and my hunger is that like I still feel 20. And, and that is because I'm kind of still reaching for the same yeah. things. Like I feel like I haven't, I haven't achieved or been in things that I've necessarily yeah. set out for like, you know, GTA. I don't know mm -hmm. video games. I never played video games. I wasn't into video games when they were going to make, and it was an audition and stuff, but when I was going to, the, the whole idea was I was going to be made into a cartoon, which some people are like, well, he's not a cartoon. He's a video, but I'm like, well, but he is a cartoon. Like yeah. to me, it's a, I, I call him yeah. a cartoon character and they were basing yeah. it on my look obviously a little more weathered and as i get older i'm starting to resemble him more and more as the face gets you know <laughs> more and more decrepit yeah but i was like how how cool is that i get to be a cartoon yeah like it's yeah. my voice and it's motion capture but it wasn't something i'd set out to do and obviously i got the job mm -hmm. and it went on to you know the trevor and all of that but i had never th thought about doing that um yeah. walking dead 
again. Like I, I never really watched it. Uh, yeah. I was never into those shows. Uh, Westworld, <laughs> Snowpiercer, like honestly, all these things like graphic <clears throat> novels I'm not into. So I never read mm-hmm. any of them. I didn't see Kirkman's work before. Um, so it's, you know, the tick. I mean, all these things have been so much fun, but like, you know, one of the most, uh, let's say the short history of The Long Road, which is a film I did with yeah. the Carpenter. I was in the beginning. I was that. That was one that I was like so excited to do because I was just a dad raising his daughter, yeah. trying to sort of, she's leaving the nest and he's juggling how yeah. am I going to, allow my daughter to to leave this life right but that like i wanted so that was satisfying for that but uh, so yeah it's i still feel like I, I posted something yesterday about the um the actress from titan did you ever see the french film titan no i haven't seen it it's a beautiful french filmmaker she's uh and it's 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 pretty it's pretty hardcore but it's, it's, again, unexpected, some twists, some turns, which I love. And um, the actress who played Titan, she was just in a Gus Van Sant inspired. Gus Van Sant did The Last Days, which was that mm-hmm. sort of about Kurt Cobain. So I just saw her on her Instagram. And this is, this is what I do now to anyone that inspires me, be it an actor, a singer, songwriter, a beer, if it's of quality and taste yeah. that I love, I will message to say, hey, thank you for inspiring me. It means a lot to Not be inspired. Right so she did this thing yeah. in London at the, the Royal Opera House. That was the last days. Was, I forget. It wasn't called the last days of Kurt Cobain, but she played a Kurt Cobain-ish character. Mm-hmm. And then they had this opera that I was like, they performed it at five, for five days. And I was like, that. And I posted something about this is still what like very inspiring, still what I reach for and strive for. Because those are the people like yeah. I I want to I still want to do those projects that are. I don't know what how we what the label is for them these days. I wouldn't say avant garde, but I've always been into, yeah. um, and not immersive theater per se, but into just really different stuff like. The projects, the dream projects, when people say, you know, when you're doing yeah. press or they're like, what would you, uh, what would be your dream project or whatever? Mine are like, you know, usually people are, what? They've never heard of but One that I always mention yeah. is The Life and Death of Marina Abramovich, which mm, yeah. was performed at the Park Armory. This was maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, but yeah. Marina was in it. And she was sort of performing. It was like her funeral, but she was alive. And she was going through all of her performance pieces. And again, at the Park Armory, it's a beautiful space in New York. And Willem Dafoe was doing, he was like the narrator. And he was in Mm. sort of this, what he used to do at Wooster Group, a lot of kind of this kabuki inspired. He was wearing like a, a sumo, like a white thong thing yeah. and his painted right. face white and then his hair was like wild enough he kind of looked like the joker and he was just uh-huh. you know he was just moving around the stage sort of narrating this <laughs> thing and then anthony at the time she's now known as a noni i think she transferred to yeah i think a noni, yeah it was anthony at the time but now she's a noni a singer uh yeah. S- stood on the, the corner of the stage belting out this song called cut the world in this beautiful black gown and she you know she's like six feet six one stunning stunning image and willem dafoe yeah. running around i'm like i'd love to do that like these things that i yeah. these worlds i have never that i've wanted and i was talking to someone at yeah. the beginning of the year that was like almost like a dream project for me that i was so excited about but then unfortunately it's kind of disappeared. Like I followed up once I followed up twice and then I don't get a response after a bit. I start to think, well, I guess it, I guess they just don't like me or they don't want to work with me, but <laughs> they're all so busy and they yeah. have their life. And you know, I might not be at the top of their, you know, it might not be as important to them as it is to me, but these, this is why I right. say like, I just keep reaching for these things. Cause I'm like, I don't know yeah. how to get in with these people, but those people, those are the things I really want to do. The films that, 
you know, going to see the eternal daughter tonight is Joanna Hogg's new film with Tilda Swinton and uh, like a 24, you know, anything a 24, I mean, Stephen Young, yeah. what he's been doing, his, his films like, yeah, that's why I still feel 20. Cause all of those things yeah. I haven't done, I haven't had those opportunities yet. And I'm still right. Yeah. People think I might be picking and choosing and why do you choose these same kind of characters? And I'm like, cause they're the ones I book. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah i'm not being offered yeah. stuff people it's very yeah. interesting people think like even with this will smith film with you know emancipation finally coming yeah. out which is is great because it's beautiful incredible film um mm. but you know working with will smith and he's you know oh, yeah we got to do a because it's a pretty intense i'm sort of the first not the first slave owner but i'm in the very beginning of the film setting the tone for what white racist civil war yeah evil looked like and i'm i'm sort of representing yeah. that and uh yeah but so we're you know he's like yeah we should do a you know we should do a comedy because we're having fun between takes and you know he's a cool guy yeah. and uh and i was like mm, sure will i think you might have to set that one up because <laughs> and it's even like ben foster who i love yeah. respect is on the film and they it's funny yeah. when I work with some of these people, they they sort of think I'm I'm at that table with them, and I'm I'm yeah. not like that's again I still feel twenty like I just got two auditions today, even like Jeffrey Dean Morgan right Negan he uh, on Walking Dead he said yeah I had auditioned for an AMC show and we had just met the president of AMC and all these people, and I was like oh I just read for that and he's he's like oh you read the script and I was like no I read for it like an audition and Jeffrey's like what? They didn't just offer that <laughs> shit to you? I'm like, no, guy. Right. I'm fr that's so. just the way it goes for me. I'm still 20. <clears throat> like I still have to audition. I yeah. still have to grind away. I still reach. I still want to do these different projects, these, you know, obscure films, these, it's, it's, it's weird. And people assume that I'm yeah. like picking and choosing and it's like, no, I'm, desperately seeking sometimes with a equal amount of frustration because sometimes I'm like, I don't know what the fuck else I have to do. You know? Yeah. Whew. I mean, is that, that a, <laughs> was that, did I you got some feelings anything? about it? <laughs> you get, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're somewhere else now. Uh, but I dig, I dig it though. Cause this is part of what I wanted to get to anyway. And I do want to get more into your background and how you first got into all this, you know, 20 years ago or whatever it was, you know, or even longer now, but like ago. 200 years ago, 6,000 years um, ago at the dawn of time. Um, but no, like, I don't, I mean, just whether it's, I mean, Trevor or, you know, Simon, or what's your character's name in Emancipation? Colonel Howard, I think is, he's Howard. Yeah. And like him, maybe most of all, because I mean, you know, Trevor is just, you know, lunatic video game asshole. Simon's a lunatic post-apocalyptic asshole. But I mean, you know, somebody like that, he, he really existed at some point, probably. Yeah. You know, well, with that character, like the, uh, the current, the current, yeah, and like, is it, is it? I mean, I don't know, like, it, not to be like projecting my own whatever, but like, what does it ever feel a little bit fucked up getting into those head spaces, especially you know the racist, you know, plantation owner and things like that? Um, I mean, how do you sort of process that? How do you navigate that? Because I mean, it is acting, it is an art and craft, and so maybe there's detachment there. But I'm just curious how that works for you because. I feel like that could get kind of intense. It does in the moment, but like, I'm also, yeah. and that's where like talk about athletics and stuff. And even like, you know, I have my sort of, it's almost become an OCD routine for me, especially when I'm, you know, depressed or just, I was the past, I'd say like week or 10 days. I've just been kind of on a low, just depressed and, and yeah. the depression when it leaves then turns into frustration, which is really pleasant to be around. So I go from being a sad clown to a mad clown. Um, yeah. But what happens is I have this routine I have to do. And this all gets around to answer your question. But what happens is like mm -hmm. I have to do, you know, I get up, I usually do some yoga. And I take the dog for a nice long walk. 
sometimes I'll read. Well, I have coffee first, coffee in my book in the morning. So words, I need yeah. an art book. I need something uh, inspiring in my head, a good writer, some good words, something. Coffee, good. Yoga, dog walk, spin, just because my body's broken, so I can only do certain things now. Um, right. But what all that does, part of it is the myopic focus it takes to do that. That trains me. And that's part of my training. And that's part of my thing yeah. that when I get on set, how do I get into these characters or how do I do it? Because I just fucking focus. I just become myopic. I become the Clydesdale horse. There's nothing else. It's me and you. And I'm looking at you. And now I have these words to say. And what do the words say? Well, they're generally going to give you the character because that's, and then it, it just goes from there. But if you're, if you're focused, that's it. But that's like me on the spin bike. I go yeah. fucking hard for an hour. I have a puddle around me. It's just obscene. But then when I get off the bike, I'm not thinking about spinning anymore because I just gave everything on it. And now I'm off. I'm not thinking about my legs are still spinning. So I get into a scene. I do it. There's residual side effects. I can't say it. you just forget about it. But I just literally pour everything I can. And that's maybe the intensity or whatever is yeah. with you what, or whoever I'm with, or however many <clears throat> people are in the scene, whatever it is, I just fucking lock in. So I think by doing that, it gives me that analogy of then getting off the bike. I still feel I've done something. My legs still might burn a bit, yeah. but I poured everything into it. So therefore I don't, carry it around with me and i think that's what i right. acting wise try to do and yeah i mean i'm sure it there it, it does bother like especially antoine at one point with this this emancipation with will he kind of came over and you know he was just like basically like he wanted me to really fuck with will like he's like just mm -hmm. you call him every name and you can't like, I'm immediately not thinking, oh, I can't because that's racist or how's this going to look? But I'm not thinking that. I'm like, this is my job. This is what I was hired to do. He needs this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it. I'm not thinking. And a couple of the other actors we talked on our, we were an hour outside of New Orleans. So we would, you know, all go back usually at the end of the day and talk about this. Because sometimes it was brought up like, man, I just, it really disturbs me having to say some of this stuff. So it did yeah. bother some people and it, I don't want to say it didn't bother me. I just, and I think I articulated that I don't want it to bring into my consciousness about this because then I can't mm. be myopic and focus and do exactly what I need to do yeah. because then I'm holding back or I'm worried about how this is sounding or looking. No, my job, take those words and fucking do this character and, and give it yeah. everything. And that's my job. So that's, that allows me to sort of, I think, let it go is, is that, that focus, or I could yeah. just be completely dead inside and have no, no <laughs> feelings whatsoever. No, well, clearly that's not true. I mean, some of the, like you, uh, I mean, this is another tangent, but like you, you post these poems and you even read them, you know, on Instagram and things like that. I mean, I feel like you're the opposite of dead inside. I don't, I don't think you know how to turn it off just from yeah. what. I I'm seeing that's part of my, um, my, my problem sometimes yeah. is the lack of epidermis and, you know, yeah, I've become, <laughs> it's my art installation now. I'm actually working on, we, we got a, a, a UK publisher, which I'm hoping is still happening because we've had some, some lack of, uh, I haven't talked in a bit, but I've been working on those, which I'm excited. I, I get again, the past week, uh, if I'm depressed, I'm like, what's the point? Oh man. And then I have friends visiting and yeah. they're like, do like, especially now, if you're not doing anything, finish those books, man. You're like, love your writing. Yeah. If it touches people. And so I'm like, okay, maybe I'm good enough to finish them. You know? Yeah. Is that hard? I mean, that's like such a thing, right? Like if it's just you having to like validate your own shit, is that, harder for you than if you know i'm sure that i mean the money and getting bills paid from work is one thing but like 
Does it make it harder for you when you're the one having to tell yourself, yeah, you go do this? Does it make it harder for you to be myopic about it as opposed to having somebody else telling you or is it the, the self motivation? What makes is, that is harder? Really tough. I mean, that's, that's the life of an yeah. actor or an artist in general is, mm -hmm. and that's where the past week or so has been tough because I've been, I actually wrote about it. I think it was just on my last Instagram post with all my yoga uh, on it was it's, it was this image that came up with me, which is interesting. Again, reading Nick Cave, I was like, one of his, his albums, he comes up with an image. And I was like, that's kind of what happened when I wrote this, this image of, I just felt, I kind of woke up and I'm a morning, like 6 a.m., love and life, coffee, words, it's going to be a great day today. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Like uh, obnoxious. But the past week I was like, <laughs> I mean, I still got out of bed. So it wasn't like that depression, which a lot of people suffer and I can completely empathize with. But this was me just like, I felt like I had layers of like heavy coats, like 17 layers of clothing on that were just kind of keeping me down. And then I wrote about no. sort of this disrobing process. So like my coffee and I, and I, got this other book I've been reading that I'm into and I love and all of a sudden that got another coat off me and then I did yoga and that allowed another coat but fuck me it took it was a grind to get yeah. to a place where I felt you're gonna be okay today buddy and even once I was there yeah. I still felt like I'm not gonna get like I just I'm a sack of shit yeah so that motivation <laughs> Yeah. It gets tough. It gets tiring, man. And then, you know, I've never been a jealous actor. I've never been like, um, I celebrate, I'm proud of friends that have, I hate to use the word succeed, but, you know, get that big role or get something that <coughs> I'm envious of. And, and lately it's been something, I don't know if it's my age or what, but I've been getting a, a tinge of the gels, a tinge of the gels. Like yeah. looking and going, oh, what yeah. is he? God, he just got another project, just another yeah. film, another sh like same people, like back to back to back, and I'm just like, I wish that was me. And then people say, well, it is you. You are back. I'm like, no, but it's you know, like so. That's what gets tough because you're just always trying to keep motivated, yeah. trying to keep up, trying to keep, you know, oh, things are gonna work out. I, I, and I'm a bit of a. Uh, I'm a, I'm a pessimistic optimist. You got to have belief and hope. But at the same time, yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, I ain't getting younger. And I'm certainly feeling, right. well, I'm probably in better shape now than when I was 20. But more just that, like, yeah, if you just look at the, the scale of things, I'm closer to death than to life. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I'd yeah. love shit to start happening sooner rather than later. Um just yeah. in what, you know, the, the kind of projects or, or type of things that I'd love to be involved in. Um, yeah. So yeah, all it gets tough. Well, it's probably, I mean, it's probably the gels a bit, you know, the jealousy I'm sure is real, but I mean, I, you know, just if I'm imagining myself in your shoes, watching some of that happen, you're probably also just like, fuck, I could, I could do that. Like you just, you want to do it. Like, you know how to do it. You know, you could do great at it. And it's just, it's just what yeah. you want to do, you yeah. know? I mean, it's, it's some jealousy, I'm sure, but also just that. I mean, shit, like, I, you know, I could do that. People have always said, you know, with like the Joker, people have always yeah. said you'd be such a great Joker. And, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. And I think it would be, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix did an incredible job. Uh, and he's an incredible actor. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, a role like that, I could, I could smash. Uh, but I don't even get, you yeah. know, again, it's not like I'm in a conversation or in a room with people. Um, and I think it was, I forget, um, the end of the Batman, what's his name? And he's a great actor who had the little, mm. little cameo of the Joker. Well, I don't know, is it yeah. Barry Keoghan? Is that it? Yeah. Wonderful, great actor. Apparently he sent in a self tape yeah. or something as some character to the director years ago. Just yeah. there was no movie being planned. He just sort of sent it in, and that's what the director always remembered. So there's always, 
I don't yeah. know. And honestly, sometimes it's thanks why I do some of these things on Instagram. I just make these characters and I do these, uh, these different yeah. characters, just almost like a, the, something it, to gives me something to do. It, it, uh, holds me accountable to be creative. Uh, and then I just kind of put it yeah. out there into the world of hopefully that, you know, someone goes, Oh, because even now I've heard this week, yeah. that there's a casting director who literally just sees me as one thing. And he won't see yeah. me for other things. And it's like, you know, I'm an, I'm an actor. I, I'm not that one thing. Right. And it bo- boggles yeah. my mind. Like show business is so hilarious for how <laughs> non show, like the, 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 the lack I just, of creativity. I don't know. I don't know how you all aren't just all completely insane. Honestly, well, some of the <laughs> shit you have to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, your hair is bleach blonde right now. I know, and then with the ship of fools in the background, it's like good. I look like I'm in an insane asylum right now. A serious joke vibes got, right now. It's because I last time I had my hair grow out because I'm always shaving my head. I realized I had a blonde, mm-hmm. and so it was just one of those things. I got back, and I was you know just thought oh, let's let's do it for something fun you yeah. know so got a reason is in it have it cut because i'm starting to look like i realized that divers the drivers divers and drive-ins show you know the well, guy, yeah well, guy yeah. fury action i saw myself the other day yeah. and i'm like oh yeah. my god Oh God! You you need to play Guy Fieri in the oh Guy Fieri biopic. Just lifetime, man, right? Presents. Nah. <laughs> um. Well, to you know, dial it back to where I was trying to go in the beginning before we both you know got on everything else, which has been you great. But I mean, you say you feel like I you're feel twenty. Like I go on these tangents. I think you've you've been steering the no, ship quite been... well. I just. <laughs> No, not at all. This has been great, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, talking about being 20, I mean, how, what, what got you into this in the first place? You know, when we talked, you know, back in the spring, you mentioned to me, you know, you grew up in theater and then you got really focused on sports for a few years, um, became one of the best in your sport in, you know, your home country, Canada. One of the best bench warmers. Turned to acting again. Hey, you were up there, man. Tell it, walk us through it. So, what what got you here? What got you started in uh, well, this was, back I mean, then? I've, as far as I recall, it was, it was the Betty Boop in elementary school that kind of got me the performing bug. Mm. I then did theater, it like storybook theater and workshop theater at, in Calgary, um, and I I always looked older. So, you know, when I was ten or eleven, I was playing like runaway fourteen year olds. There was a play literally called Runaway. Really. And there was the long, the short, and the tall, which was, uh, I was a British soldier who had lost his way. Um, Dracula's treasure. So all these, <laughs> these theater things I did. And then um, I never like studied. I think I was, there was a whole RADA to study in London because I had a mentor in Calgary, uh, Peter Spear, who had an Aurora theater company. Uh, went to see some shows with him. And it was when... So he, he died and this was in, in Calgary and it was pneumonia, but I'm, you know, pretty sure, you know, that was not pneumonia. And of course that was just the beginning of the whole AIDS crisis. And so Mm -hmm. that affected me profoundly. I also had a movement teacher, like a dance. I used to take these dance classes uh, and he jumped off the roof and killed himself. So there was a couple like deaths within the the world that Fuck. I just ended up sort of I didn't I didn't go to London to study I didn't I just kind of lost uh, I just I don't know it was if it was grief sad I just decided I want to focus on sports mm. and initially it was like this whole Renaissance man I wanted to be you know to cook to act to sports to paint to mm. But then I thought, well, you know, I think I'm just maybe mediocre at everything. So let's see if I can just get really good at one thing. <laughs> so I focused on volleyball mm-hmm. and I was, you know, short. And I think the one time I was on the televised game, T- TS- TSN, I think, TSN, it's 
Canada Sports Network, TSN. Yeah, TSN. Yeah, Canada's yeah. version. So of I ESPN. remember going on. I was, yeah. you know, I was third string because the guys ahead of me, they were always going to be. They were Canada's top volleyball player. So I was always going to be third string when I got to university. And I remember the the, which is wild because you're six three. Yeah, I was right? the runt. Six three, six four. Like you're a big dude, and, and so you were the right. And like, wow, I okay. Have, I had like a forty inch oh, wow. vertical. I was a fucking angry brick shit house, and I was a power hitter, and I would just <laughs> yeah. wow, man. I was just a fucking firecracker. Jesus. But yeah, I hustled. I worked, but I wasn't a great volleyball player. Like I, had, you know, I was a guy who was just worked hard. And, uh, and no. then, so I got that and I knew I was always going to be a third string. There was nothing going to change in that. Why, uh, why volleyball? I don't know. Again, it's like, why Betty no. Boop? There was Interesting. no, yeah. I, I played some basketball. I think maybe friends were doing it. I honestly don't remember what that like mm. I played soccer when I was young. I mean, the whole thing with athletics and, and why I still do the spinning and stuff is like I said, it, it really, um, it creates a focus. There's a discipline to, to athletics, to training. Now, not all athletes are good actors. Yeah. Right? We've, we've seen that, <laughs> but it has certainly yeah. helped me, yeah. um, maintain focus and so i did that and then i i got injured which was sort of serendipitous because i couldn't have gone i would have literally for four years in university just been sitting on the bench and it's sort of like a lot of these projects the walking dead these bigger shows i've been on i love doing them but i kind of want to be the leader like i did one film in england called solace and i was the only it was me in a spaceship dying yeah. i loved it just because I loved not being the center of attention, yeah. but I loved having everything riding on me. Like I had that pressure I love and I want to be, you know, I am a good leader and I am, I'm fun on set and I'm, you know, disciplined and I think set a good example for how things should run. But anyways, I digress. Yeah. Injured opportunity to go to Toronto for the summer because a, when I was playing volleyball, I went to the local paper, the Calgary Herald, uh, because true story, someone at the Calgary Herald was doing a food section, like in the food section of the newspaper, it was an article on buns, like buns, but best buns. And they asked our coach, okay. who was female, Raisa, who has the best ass on the team. <laughs> so Steven gets... Uh -huh. I got the nod for the best the buns. I go to the Calgary mm -hmm. Herald. They literally, the picture was, I'm wearing jeans and it's just of my butt with breadsticks in the pocket. Best no buns. Way. So I do that as I'm wow. leaving. And I'm wearing my, like, you know, my volleyball jacket. And, you know, I'm, hey, Jocko, hey. Uh, there was a, a model scout yeah. there that was doing some photo fashion shoot. And he's like, oh, are you here for the fashion shoot? And I was like, no, I just, you know, I just had a picture of my ass taken. And, uh, and so he said, Oh, would you be interested in having some pictures taken? And I was like, okay. So the next day it was in winter in Calgary. I went, it was just torso, you know, the, the, the 1980, uh, you know, right. thing with the, and I had a oh papa right. Sattva <laughs> dogs having a nightmare. Sorry. Um, no. What he kind said of dog you got? Just a, he's over there under the table. Oh, hey, dude. Just, he's my shadow. He just follows me everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we did, he sprayed yeah. water on me. And in this picture, I clearly remember there was a drip on my chest. It wasn't a drip. The fucking water froze because it was winter in Calgary and it didn't even slide out. It just turned to ice. So the picture has this ice on it. So it's of my body. He sends it to Toronto. In Toronto, they say, oh, would Stephen love to come and do like some underwear stuff, which I ended up doing like those boxes, mm -hmm. like Marky Mark did the Calvin Klein. I did a Canadian version. Right. Where it was just, just oh, my body. It was, and so I yeah. ended up doing a few things like that, like just 
underwear, just some body stuff. And so I thought that was going to be a summer and then head back to university, which I was injured. I didn't really want to. Yeah. And then I met a girl. You'll see a, you know, there's a pattern here. Um, and uh, she said, yeah. you're, not, you're never going to go back home. You're never going to return to school. And I was, you know, I was just like, no, nah, well, and she just, she goes, oh, you're on a journey now. And that's, and that's what happened. I had an opportunity mm -hmm. to go to Italy to do like runway stuff, which again was sort of performing. And, and oh, my wow. dad was, because I was, you know, my mama's boy. I was like, I want to go back to Calgary. And it was funny because it was so painful. I, I then ended up spending five years in Europe not all like with the modeling walkway stuff. I just did that for a bit. And then I quickly segued out because again, I was, I was like the bench warmer of models. You know, I'm not, there was those beautiful people. Yeah. And then there was this interesting guy, but I wasn't working. I wasn't getting anything. Um, <laughs> so that sort of led up to right. then two years in Paris going to and I was Vancouver for a year, Montreal, Living everywhere. I, I sort of called them my Dostoevsky Buster Keaton travels. Uh, and I had like French braids. Come. My lumberjack jacket, that's right there. I'd wear that. Nice. And just an yeah. angry, right? Like I, in, I lived in Henry Miller's place in Paris. Wait, that's the, that's the same yeah. jacket from, no. or is that just a similar yeah, jacket? It's the, it's the same one. How long have you had that jacket now? Since I was 17. One of my few wow. possessions. I don't. I've got rid of a lot of stuff, but it's amazing. my Canadian lumberjack jacket. Oh, so yeah. then I uh, ended up in Paris, two years, Neat. and then all of these models that were still there, they were all going to be going to New York. And they were. everyone was always like, why aren't you acting anymore? You should be acting. And so I just said, yeah, well, I'm going to go to New York. And they were all giving me plays, and they're like, you're so talented. The irony is, of course, most of them, within the next two years, three years rose to like, you know, superstar fame, either supermodels or big movies. So all the beautiful people are doing that. And then here's me wow. like yeah. grinding along going, Damn. Oh fuck, you get that. Cause you're beautiful. All right. So went to New York, <laughs> no working papers, yeah. you know, nothing. This is back in the fax days, So I could fax, like I'd cater waiter. I did some personal training, anything to make money. Um, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you'd fax it so that, cause the card would say work with INS authorization only on it. And you'd fax it. So they couldn't see that. Right. Like, Oh, the cards cut off. And I'm like, Oh yeah, man, these fax machines jammed, but it would at least provide a number that they <laughs> could hire me. So it was that whole grind, that struggle. Yeah. And then, you know, went to wow. an acting coach, which like Garrett Dillahunt, I met Garrett Dillahunt there, uh, and we're still friends. Just did his show, um, yeah. so that and that's I just got back into it, and then you know this was back in the day too when you either were a theater actor, commercial actor, TV actor, film actor. One like there's no mixing, right? So right. I decided, you know, I yeah. did some off Broadway, but I was like, I'm going to make a name for myself in TV. I want to be a TV actor. I want to make a bunch of money in America, you know, because again, I went to America because what its greatest thing and its weakest is the capitalist society that it is. I wanted to take <laughs> right? it, make yeah. it, squeeze it, yeah. milk it, and then go like to Vancouver and start a production company and just make my own films. That was right. 25, six years ago. So, yeah. Then that's how yeah. it began. You just pick away, pick away, pick away. And to this day, picking away, still picking yeah. away. Yeah. I mean, what were the moments where, well, first, how are you on time? Because we're at four or uh, one o'clock now. Well, so we've had an like hour. 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. You got a little bit more time? Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, you talked before about, you know, you always, feel, you still feel like you're reaching for stuff. Uh, what, I mean, what were some things you felt like you're reaching for that you got, you know, before and 
Yeah, I'll ask that question first, uh, and then there's a follow up. Because again, like I said, all these 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 bigger projects, you, you know, they're auditions, right? So I'm auditioning, and so what am I reaching for? And yeah. I'm just reaching for a job, for an opportunity to act. What is your percentage, you think, of auditions and and attempts at landing work to actually landing the work? What's the batting average there? Uh, I mean, it's you know, I've I I haven't had a lot of auditions recently. Like I just got these two today that I'm super excited about. Um, but and that yeah. was the other thing is I thought shit. Even with the auditions I'm doing and I'm they're good, I'm not booking them. So. The things I shot this year were yeah. just the smaller <clears throat> indie films through connections and friends, and that's what I tend to get yeah. success from that, as opposed to audition. Like sometimes I'm like, Dude, "That was a good audition. Yeah. How did they not get that?" Well, well, that's like, yeah. I mean, that's the reason I ask is like not to somehow you know make you sound or look bad for having a low percentage because I think everybody does. Like that's the point. Like that's how much you love this shit. Is I mean, it's almost like nothing can stop you, even if you wanted to. It doesn't seem like it's something you can turn off. Like it's I gotta keep trying to do this. It's very frustrating because it's like I wish there was something else I could do. But yeah, especially at this imagine. point, you know. I mean, I did spend five years building right. a house in Connecticut, learning how to build a house. That was awesome, and I thought maybe I'll be a landscape architect or something. But then it's just like my time in Europe. It just bubbles up mm -hmm. like that creativity, that need to to act. I just love to act. Like I don't want to write my own yeah. script. I don't want to, I just want to act. I want to be of service. And that's what frustrates me. Cause there's, there's some people that are just either not professional or that they keep getting work after work and they're, you know, shitty or I had a friend telling me a story yesterday, working right. with a, a big name who's, you know, just shot up. And he was like, I had to, just carry her every scene because she did not know her lines. She couldn't memorize. She didn't know how to pronounce these yeah. words. And she's the star. So, and she gets opportunity right. after opportunity. It's frustrating for, for those of us. That, that's that got to be, that's got to be so frustrating. Cause like, I mean, you, you clearly love it on a deep, you know, borderline spiritual, if not outright spiritual level of from the way you talk about it and the shit you post on Instagram sometimes and things like that. I mean, there's something deep and real and raw there for you. And then just like a reverence for the craft of it all. And then, yeah, I can't imagine like, cause I'm sure you see stuff oh, like that you know, regularly. I mean, and I was talking to, um, yeah. wonderful director, Ben Cleary, who's, who made Swan Song beautiful film swan song uh and we yeah. were chatting yesterday and um yeah just talking about like and he loves he loves filmmaking and he loves the words too and just there's there's a lot of there's a lot of us mm -hmm. out there and it's it's he had such a beautiful experience on that film and i always hearken to jonah nolan on westworld the pilot he had a no asshole policy and mm -hmm. that, i love that yeah. it's like I've been very fortunate. The sets I've been on, I haven't encountered. I mean, Emancipation was, you know, the biggest film I've been on. Um, yeah. But no, you know, no attitude, no, you know, Will was wonderful, sweet. Like, just everything was great. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, lo I, I love what I do and I do. I am, for better or for worse, a different person when I'm working. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, but yeah, I, I derailed fault. us that time. So <coughs> oh, I know fuck. leaf blowers got me that time. Um, but no, we're talking about, you know, you're getting up into this and grabbing, reaching for things and getting them. I mean, ha has there been a role like that in the past that, you know, you've really wanted or, or just a type of role or anything like that? Or do you feel like you still haven't really quite grabbed what it is you're reaching for? Yeah. I mean, I, I still feel like I'm, you know, like, what is that ideal role? I don't, I, it's honestly probably just, you know, I mean, theater, I wish I could get back. It's tough to get back into the theater. I haven't done it in so long and I'd love to do it. I'm, I was in London. I met with some theaters over there, Young Vic, and we were talking about Lonesome West. I wanted to redo that, the Martin McDonough play. Like, I'd love to work with Martin McDonough, like the, the three billboards and the, you know, the seven yeah. psychopaths he did and his plays, like Lonesome West I love and all of his stuff. 
um, that I'd love to do. And before COVID, I was meeting with theaters in London. Yeah. And then, you know, I changed teams because no one was doing anything. And then I'm bad at the business following up or I just get discouraged when I don't hear back. <laughs> and so that kind of just disappeared. And so yeah. those are the things that like, I would love to do that. And I even like the, uh, the Mark Rothko play, uh, uh, red two person play stuff like that. Like I want to yeah. do, I think I'm craving theater again, just because the rehearsal process, like I love every day working mm. on something, reading, uh, playing, collaborating, yeah experimenting that's why you know, even on a set if it's yeah. a little tiny technical thing i love doing it because it's a craft you get to okay how can i pick this up and move this and not yeah. have that shadow on my face with the camera over i just i love it so i mean i'd love to work with right. a small group of people that are just as passionate and creative and uh playful so there's you know, it's more that than a specific I must play, uh, yeah. uh, you know, in a romantic comedy or I must be a superhero or I must be right, a right. soldier. I don't think about I gotcha. that. Like this one audition I have is for a really cool new upcoming show that's kind of a Western. And reading that, I was like, ooh, that'd be fun. Uh, just because yeah. that's, again, yeah. such a big world and to play, uh, y you know, um, but again, it's a big show. Have you ever tried to write it? Like, have you tried to write I mean, any of your own movies or scripts or I mean, I've, plays? Or I've I've always written. I love the words, but it's mostly prose and you know what what amounts yeah. to I guess poetry. I mean, it, it's lyrics or lyrics, words or words. So if I, mm -hmm. I often say, if I was a musician, which a lot of my friends are that I'm inspired by, um, because it's yeah. the words. And so if I was a singer songwriter, you know probably instead of my Instagram stuff, I would be in the studio and I would just record and write a song and then put it out yeah. to the world. But I, I can't. So instead I do my, my little yeah. contribution for, for creativity. But yeah, so it's more, it's more about the situation. I mean, I've always said I'd love to do like a survival picture, you know, like in the woods, Jeremiah Johnson, grow a big beer. Right. Those kind of things have always I've, I've thought about that. Um, yeah I mean you did you've done some uh, I mean you just did that video with um, the singer uh, songwriter Dan Mangan yeah. right did I say his last name right yeah Dan I mean, that, what was that like for you that's a pretty different turn yeah, for you compared to what people know you for we've been talking about doing a project together and then when he was doing his new album sent me a preview of it all and a couple songs that I that stood out and then that was the one chosen for the video. So I just went up for the weekend and, you know, I just loved Dan and it was just fun to play again. Cause you get to, you get to act, you yeah. get to have fun. And that was just, we had such a fun, fun weekend yeah. doing that. Cool. You ever thought about Broadway? Trying think, to yeah, make a run of that? Any, any, again, it's the opportunities, right? I just, I don't have those opportunities yeah. and I'm still, that's why I yeah. say if I'm 20, I still scratch my head. Like, how the fuck do I get those opportunities? What, yeah. you know, what do I have to do? You, you get sort of new people working with you and you they get you some stuff and then you say, I, I really want to do this. And someone says they're going to get you in and then you don't get in. And that's, that's yeah. why I keep saying I'm 20 is because I still feel like I'm trying to get in those doors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, we're talking at the beginning, we were going to, I was going to circle back to, I mean, you just, you also just did this end of you filmed at the beginning of the year too, right? You playing a sheriff. Yeah. I mean, More I've done this year. I did straightforward like I role for you. The year, a cyberpunk thriller called Dresden sun, uh, which Christina Ricci's in mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, a yeah. severe is in it. And, uh, then some wonderful friends, Samantha Wynn now and Ray Chama. So there's quite a group. And that was fun because I played this monk character, bald headed, really cool looking dude who cool. doesn't, he uses stun guns. So he's a, he's a, a mercenary that doesn't kill. Okay. He just stuns them. 
Uh, okay. That was that was fun. Yeah. It's a different character, and then I think I went right from that into I did the sheriff was now I see with uh, Jay uh, Hughley mm-hmm. and uh, Annalise Spasso, who I did Snowpiercer with, and that was that I loved because mm-hmm. he, was, he was a small town sheriff helping this woman that her kid's been abducted, and he's just you know they're not these aren't yeah. big lead parts but they're just part of the ensemble film but again someone who's just trying to help like just a good a good man um and then yeah and then i was just in in august it was my happiest time period because i had three projects within a month i started on this northern ontario one where again i played a guy whose cabin sort of houses a, a group of people that are escaping kind of this far right mm. movement that's happening in the big cities. Uh, and it's to the extreme. So they all mm. kind of escape to the woods and it's my cabin. Cause I was friends with one of them. I said, yeah, come to the cabin. So I'm kind of the, the guy who runs the house and um, you know, then the far right end up finding us in the cabin and, and that, but again, it just someone who's, I don't want to say normal, but normal, you know? And then, right. uh, and then I was bounced yeah. over to Maine to yeah. shoot this yeah. uh, lobster story, which is, looks just so beautiful. And I was just the father. Again, a small part, but, you know, I play a father who's, uh, whose son is – the story is about my, my son. But, again, it was just – he has a bit of piss mm-hmm. and vinegar in him, but – it was just nice to play that. So it was like, yeah, it's been, it's been great for doing these projects. And then again, people, it sounds like I'm super busy and yeah, I've worked, but it's not like I've got anything lined up and I'm not, you know, I'm just hustling away, hustling away, trying to yeah. meet people, trying to talk to people. It's a constant, it's a constant grind, you know, which people, again, it's so funny when people have this, yeah. You know, this perception of me in that either I'm again, picking and choosing projects or I'm, or I'm someone like right. at that table and I'm like, no. And and some people can't like understand what the disconnect is because no. I'm, I'm known. I have a name yet. I'm not a name. You know, all we need a different like for yeah. this film, this indie, we're looking for a, a name or we need it's just so weird it's always this weird disconnect of what people think or the perceive me yeah. as or like i said this casting director who just thinks of me as like this one way and it's like but then look at other things like look at the other there's other yeah. performances to check out you know like the short history yeah. of the long road we were just talking to my manager the other day and i said you know we, we'll just tell we just keep telling him look at this there's a dad. He's just a normal dad. Yeah. He can yeah. act that. He can act yeah. psycho. He can act funny. He can, uh, you know, it's acting. Yeah. So, yeah. But again, I don't want to sound like I'm yeah. fucking whining about it. I mean, I was going to. Opportunities. Uh, some get none. It's- it doesn't sound like. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like that. It's just the reality of, I mean, being a working artist, whatever your medium. I mean, this shit's hard. You know, I mean, I was going to ask, like, I mean, so like, what's the answer? How do you change it? How do you do whatever? But I mean, just from everything you're saying, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you just, you gotta keep making shit. You just gotta keep making things and, you know, do the best you can on the days you, you do have, you know, all the layers on top of you and the days you don't just yeah make the best of it. I mean, not, not to like oversimplify it, but I mean, everything you're saying, I mean, this shit's so hard, but all you can do is just keep doing it. I mean, it yeah, sounds like you couldn't stop even I if you wanted to. And it was, I think it was Helen Mirren or yeah. Dame Judy yeah. Bench. One of them, one of those two said, if you have nothing to fall back on, you got to keep going forward. And as you get older, it starts mm-hmm. to be like, oh, yeah. but it hurts. Literally, my back, my knees. Um, but <laughs> yeah. there, there's a case for that. And then, you yeah. know, again, like today, I have to say is probably, I've, I think I'm out of the funk zone that I've been in for a good week. 
because I think like this week I met, like I said, I talked to two directors mm-hmm. and those were, because what I do now is I just, if someone inspires me or a film, I, I'll DM the person. Thank you for inspiring me. What a beautiful piece of work. And this is again, this irony, this disconnect mm-hmm. is they'll get back to me. Not all the time, you know, some of them, cause a lot of these people aren't even on Instagram. So, but I'll they'll respond with, Oh, I love your work. Yeah. And I'm always like, what, you know who I am? So it's like, okay, so the people know who I am. I'm yeah. like, Oh, we love you. We're about to work. And so then I'm, you know, there's another Philip Baranti's, uh, um, did uh, boiling point. This movie was Stephen Graham and it just got nominated like for six awards. And, mm-hmm. uh, beautiful film, highly recommended. It's kind of this, what, have you seen it? What, bo- Boiling Point or Boiled Point? Uh, I don't Boiling think so. Boiled Point. What is it? Stephen Graham. Boiling Point? Boiled? And it's, he's, he plays I don't a think chef. I've seen it. Like no. Stephen Graham is, he's fucking, he's so good. No, Stephen I haven't Graham. seen it. But it's kind yeah. of this one take. Like Philip does mm-hmm. this whole, mm-hmm. you know, follows the restaurant. It's a, it's a night in the restaurant of the stuff going on in Stephen's life and it's so well done. So I messaged him and he was like, Oh man, thanks so much. And he was like a really cool dude. He's in London. So, you know, I'm like, whenever you're in LA or when I'm next over in London, I'd love to connect. He's like, definitely. And so again, I'm trying to do that thing of, you know, Hey, it's me again without Mm -hmm. being, Hey, it's me again. Um, Yeah. But that's how it worked with meeting Ben, yeah. who swan song, and you know, we yesterday we chatted for an hour and a half, and honestly, <laughs> it was about life. Like he's just such a wonderful man, and we talk about the process and you know, and yeah. all of that. But it was, and this is what I've. This is ironically enough what I always tell other actors when you're asked, "What do you recommend to for other actors?" I always say, "Get involved." get out there mm-hmm. yet hermit boy here yeah. doesn't do it. So it's like, do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> but I think part of my getting out of it was I've, yeah. I've talked to two, one director that I should be working with next year. Well, I will be, cause we're going to work on something really cool, interesting, different project. And then, you know, with Ben, I'm like, he's, he's got stuff, but like, we just had a nice chat and I said, Oh, you'll have to come over cause they live very close. And, uh, him and his wife yeah. said, come on over for dinner. Cause you know, and it's just, so that's my thing now is just trying to like reach out. If I watch like some cool a 24 film when I'm yeah. on my bike spinning, <clears throat> which sometimes is just fucking arduous as fuck. I mean, I go hard as hell. I'm not one of these reading a newspaper guy. I'm pretty psycho. Yeah. But I get so bored with it sometimes now that I, I just go down <laughs> rabbit holes with IMDb Pro. Who's yeah. doing what film, what studio, who's the producer, where do we generally right. based on seeing, oh, someone I know just booked this cool project. <laughs> and then I just mm. look up producers and then I message like, hey, yeah. congratulations. Sort of what I did with this yeah. London Opera House. I just messaged the actress and she said, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, cause I had messaged her for Titan too. I said, what a beautiful performance, just fucking out there. I loved it. And yeah. she said, thanks. You know, the Roy I said, what a inspiring creative work that would just be amazing to be involved in. And the director, well, the director may not be on Instagram. They have one, but that's, I'm just, I follow all these rabbit hole now and just try to, that maybe, you know, someone yeah. will be like, oh yeah. Or they'll see yeah. one of my posts. And actually read it, <laughs> like read the words, and oh, yeah, oh, he's oh, or he yeah. likes oh, or he's a Nick Cave fan, or oh, wouldn't it be cool to do a collab or like an art installation? Yeah, you know, like seeing Tilda Swinton tonight in this movie. You know, she did the yeah. glass box art installation. I'm like, I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Like, I am. I don't know yeah. if you can call it artsy fartsy these days. Yeah. There's other expressions, which I know you can't say these days, but you get the sense. Like I like, I like <laughs> theater and I love that right. world and I want to do more of that. Any of that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's just, it's like, it's just this always just trying to 
grab hold for a second of something that's just kind of intangible and almost impossible to articulate, but it's just that thing that's like beyond all of us that we all sort of feel, you know, it's kind of like what it sounds like you're trying to do with it with the, just it's, it's art. That's what art is. And I mean, it's, it's got you like you yeah, can't, I mean, funny, you couldn't get away you know, from it. If you tried the writing, from especially the like things. now I've got, so I got like 275 pieces that going through to organize into these books. And, you know, mm. as someone can certainly attest to, uh, that lives with me, you know, I was like, ah, fuck <laughs> it. There's no point in it. You know, it's dumb, stupid. And I, I can't mm. even write. I got nothing to say. I got nothing to, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Oh no, the image comes to mind or, and I got to express myself. I got to get it out. I've got to. Yeah. And so, you know, it is the irony of the Instagram is that it's kind of self, uh, indulgent, if you will. But like I said, yeah. if I was a, Oh my God. Yeah. I need a haircut. See, sometimes when I catch myself, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Stupid, <laughs> and it almost looks because this part's going my little murky. <laughs> so like my hair is just gonna be like, look at that hairline. Oh and the forehead's getting bigger, and I think this just highlights it. Like, yeah, it has. <laughs> oh no, man! It kind of looks like you're just well, owning it. It's funny because Ross, like, fuck yeah, Ross this is my hair from The Walking Dead. It's my forehead. He has that great like thick. Mm. bedhead hair and you know I, I i've always had like my thinning hair like this i swear mm. I've had for most of my life and sometimes speaking of the walking dead they'd want to spray this to fill it right. in and i was like don't worry i don't care like this is what it is yeah. you know but ross would always like he loved yeah. he's like man i just wish i had your hair and it's so funny i'm like ross you have a beautiful lovely thick curly <laughs> mane <laughs> i want your hair really but case in point i guess right. it is just owning it right like i think it's more like yeah i mean yeah. like i said I, I think i've described you know the fetal position enough that i can easily go into but that's what it's about it's why it's why I like some mm -hmm. of these things like nicole kidman so beautiful why are you doing that stuff to your face like we all have mm -hmm. our insecurities and to each his own what you want to do but I think it yeah. sends a better message to so like, God, can you imagine being an actress and you're seeing like the top actress in the world who does everything, movie, TV, she's always busy and she's gorgeous and she alters herself. Yeah. That's depressing, man. Like instead of yeah. owning, getting old, like I think like yeah. Jane duty, uh, Jane, Jane duty Dench, you know, Jane duty Dench. That's my new band. James Duty Dench. James um, Duty Dench. Yeah. Uh, I think she's beautiful. <laughs> Helen Mirren. Like, I'm sure they've had some work yeah. done. Emma Thompson. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm always mm. like, it's what I always felt with. Maybe I say this just because my face is like this. But like the Eskimos always love and show respect for like the aging, <laughs> the wrinkles, because it shows... Dallas Green, City and Color, great mm -hmm. song called Map of the World. And he sort of says, you know, there's a map of the world upon this weary face. Yeah. And it is. It's character. And it's owning it. And I think if more people did that, that energy is important mm -hmm. to put out to the world. You know? Yeah. Whew, that was yeah. a tangent too, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that was a good one. That's a good one. I think it's a good one to wrap on. So we've been going for a while. I want to respect your time here, but this has been great, man. I really appreciate it. Any other parting thoughts you want to I mean, plug? Yes. Yeah. I mean, what the, are you, you, know, you want people following you on Instagram? Follow along on Instagram. Um, no. I mean, it's changed so much Instagram, right? And I don't do the, I don't do the TikTok. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm I so mean, bad again, it's through my like creativity. Not, it does yeah. hold me accountable. Um, I've sort of, I think, hit this plateau. I lost mm -hmm. like, I, I'm not like a number counter guy, but I did count numbers when I posted something, and I dropped ten thousand yeah. followers in a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> way. What did it you was, post? What did you post? It was so ridiculous because it was a, it's a filmmaker. Oh yeah, it's, it was a character. Oh, and did you get in joke. trouble? And like the, the fact oh. that people, again, can take mm -hmm. stuff so seriously. It's like when I'm talking about Trevor, GTA, and the cartoons, and people want me to act like him. 
And then either I do act like him mm-hmm. and then they think I'm making fun of that as opposed to, well, that's, if you want the Trevor, he's kind of a belligerent asshole. Like, so I do, it's sort of this, and I've been having these people mm-hmm. like, go, oh, you were so rude. You were so terrible to fans. I was like, well, no, you said you wanted Trevor and actually that's being Trevor. That's the joke of it. But I'm not going to explain myself to you. It's, right. it's like, if you don't get it, you don't get it. And if you don't like it, you didn't like right. it. And I'm sorry. It was supposed to be fun. But it's it's that whole thing of, like, this guy just holds yeah. me accountable to to doing something and to, to being creative and, and putting it out there into the world. Um, yeah. And that's all we can do is, like, all just do our best. And, again, I think yeah. we can all be a little more kind to each other and a little more respectful. Uh, that sure would fucking help a lot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Emancipation's coming out in mm-hmm. December, and that's going to be very exciting, um, beautiful, beautiful film. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to that. And then just, you know, yeah. grinding away, grind, grind. Yeah. Good deal, man. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate the conversation. That's good. It's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think anybody trying to do anything remotely artistic, especially in your world, I mean, it's, it's uh, a double edged sword of like it's it's really encouraging. It's it can be discouraging to hear that it's just always a grind, but at the same time, I mean, it's also encouraging. Yeah, it's like it's okay, this is just where it is. Where, like you know, you we just keep going. Like got back in April, which is ridiculous. You know, it would be oh, Papa, why are you giving me sad eyes? You know, it'd be nice to continue. Yeah. Like you know, we were looking at something to maybe, you know, it's not really a collab, but more of like a piece or something to work on. Right. And I think these different angles are fun to try to explore. Yeah. And, you know, I hope we can still have an opportunity to, to yeah. do something where we can. Same. Because it it's, it's, yeah. it's not the typical angle. Like we, every time we talk, we start somewhere, but then we end up kind yeah. of being at this other place, yeah. which tends to be more interesting and something that yeah. I certainly, and this is why an hour and a half has gone by. Because A, you're wonderful to chat with, even when we were just chatting yeah. in April. But it's it's a bit of a different spin. And I think that's what's interesting. No, thanks, like I, wish, too. I hope we can do that because I think yeah. it's engaging to have a bit of a different spin. Yeah. I want to. I want to, too. With Emancipation coming out in December, it could be a good uh, window to do something. I, and I, it just occurs to me, I think it, I'm going to try to pitch some stuff about, you know, Stephen Ogg, Simon from The Walking Dead, etc., says we just we actually need to be nicer yeah. to each other. And just like bit. again, could with be the, something. You know, it's, it's I don't a, know. Might be a good opportunity yeah. with emancipation be cool. because you know, again, just from a different angle, yeah. of like the old, the old grinding workhorse OGG says he ain't gonna stop even if he gets no more mm-hmm. opportunities. <laughs> no. You know. But just right. something unique, like that's what that I like. In respect about you too. Is thinking outside yeah. the box and thinking of a something like that, I think would be a, would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But cool um, it. it was awesome to chat with you. Yeah. Good deal, man. And please, uh, reach, you know, reach out if you get you if you too. Get some you too. Like, what do you think about this with that? Oh my God, it looks like I have a. Uh, just realized as I yeah, like, um, I like will a filter, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit um, actually but yeah you yeah. know reach out if you have any, any thoughts or nice. ideas or whatever because I, I love chatting with you and, and to do something further would be great cool well same yeah yes. agreed cool man well, i'll let you fun. run uh, my best to sarah and yeah, what's the dog's name hey papa love sadfa my best to sadfa <laughs> Oh, buddy. <laughs> Just chilling under a desk. Oh, hey, dude. Right. Such a sweetie. All right. You have a, a wonderful Thanks, day man. and a wonderful weekend. And good looking dog. a pleasure to chat. Cool, man. Yeah. All right. Okay. You too. And Bye. again, same. Appreciate you. All right. We'll see you. Bye. 
Thanks again to Stephen for taking the time and giving just a hell of an interview. And thank you for listening. Make sure to check out his new movie, Emancipation, now in theaters and streaming on Apple Plus. And make sure to check out brandonsneed.com for show notes and other bonus material by subscribing to my newsletter there. And just thanks again for being here and for listening more soon. Have a great one.